Let me start by saying uh, how this software was, was made. Um, a few years ago, four or five years ago, uh, you know, I basically was trying to do the exact same thing that Jonathan was saying today. I mean, you have to start swimming if you want to survive. Uh, using technology in school is not just required in class. It's required for management probably 10 times more than it's required for class. And for years and years and years, we were using uh, our own little in-house solutions, which uh, we kept building on as we needed and as we saw fit for years. But at some point, to me, they became obsolete. Uh, at some point, I needed a solution that was going to be web-based, that I could ac access from anywhere, not just computer in my office. So we started looking at potential you know solutions that were out there on the market there were really nice solutions for I don't know accounting that could be uh, somehow fit for schools but they cost a lot of money and they were just the accounting there were very nice solutions coming from the states like blackboard that I was using when I was at college and grad school there but it was completely adjusted for US market for US schools pretty much for US colleges and it was expensive as hell it was Twenty to fifty thousand dollars a year for licenses. We started testing some of the more local European solutions. Didn't really fit our needs, uh, and I had the same experience with some of the colleagues here. So we said, well, why not try to build our own? Except for building our own, that was going to be modern web-based solutions and modern programming tools. That was for school. It's just impossible to pay that amount of money without getting help. So we wrote EU project, and we got the funding to do that. And uh, at that time, I was, I was very lucky to meet uh, Jure and his team, brilliant team of software developers. They already had a lot of experience in building uh, solutions for schools because they were actually the ones who built the entire online infrastructure for, uh, for software development contests uh, on a national basis. They built uh, the entire infrastructure for the uh, college here for, for electronics and computer programming in Split. So, they were quite experienced. They, they did lack the inner knowings of how the school works. And that's where we found the perfect combination. We started building this together. And together meaning that I was giving input on exactly what I needed. And then my professor started giving input. My, my accountant started giving input. My, 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 my students, their parents of my underage students, everybody started giving input. And as it was built during nine months, uh, basically it was built as a joint effort from all of us and we put everything that all of these groups, you know, the admins, the, the, the managers, teachers, students, whatever we needed, we were able to put in. And in the end we created Ember School Manager, which then uh, Yura's company started selling uh, and uh, by now about 15 schools and institutes for adult education in Croatia and some in Serbia are using this. So uh, today I will uh, present quickly some of the features of the software from admin or owner perspective because uh, software is really huge and to be able to, to present it all would take time and time. Some of my advanced users are still even not using every feature in there but I will try to maybe build a little bit on what Jonathan was saying and I will have to sit down because I will have to go through this and hopefully the internet connection here is stable and we won't have any problems with it. But as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm going to a website. The website is customized by, customized by the user. For me, it's direct.yantar.hr. And all I have to do is log in. There's no installation on a computer, any computer. I can do this on my phone, on my tablet. I can enter my, my school's business at any time of the day, as long as I'm connected to the internet. And uh, I will switch here to English real quick. Uh, just so everybody can understand, although this is going to make it a little bit slower for me because I'm used to working uh, in Croatian, so I'll have to read a little bit before I know where the icons are. But um, to build up on some of the Jonathan's presentation, I'm going to start from something that maybe I would usually show in the end. And again, I have to see where this is going in English, but it could be this one. That's one of the graphs, for instance, that's showing the numbers of our students per age. And um, 
just like with Jonathan, we, we have been seeing some decline in the number of the adults, uh, although this year that trend has changed uh, because now everybody is starting, trying to go into tourism, so we're getting a lot more adult students starting from the current academic year 2017-2018. The point is that I can use any type of analysis from the software to, to look at the age groups, at their success on the exams, I can see uh, my current uh, statistics for this school year right here at any point. I'm going to select my two active semesters right here and uh, it's going to take a second to generate because these are quite big and complex reports. But this is the number of my 15 and ups currently enrolled in this school year. This is the number of under 15s. So uh, people in formal education and adults, like I said, increase in their number uh, in the current academic year. I can see all of that by my locations. I have my school at four locations in Split and uh, one location in Zadar. Uh, and then I can also look for each of these locations. What's that in the languages and percentages and numbers? Uh, I can have that same view by the uh, language. For instance, uh, English is still my predominant language, although we did have a lot of German over the last few years, but English is still completely predominant. And I can also see how, each, how many each of my teachers has. And I have that same view by the teachers. Anyway, I can look at all of my data. But this is the end. So let's switch back to the beginning real quick. Like, like every software, this is going to require some sort of a student database. And this is what my student database looks like. Uh, let me find one little guy here that I know has some stuff going on. Uh, this is one of our students. He has a profile with the information, nothing too spectacular about this. This is just standard. Uh, but once we start getting into a little bit more detail, we have all of his courses his entire course history, everything he's ever taken, the courses he's taken, who the teacher was, what the grades were. For all of these, I can go back, I can print out the diplomas for them, all of them are stored indefinitely in the software. I can look at any kind of payment history that uh, he's had for each of those courses, look at the invoices that are uh, generated automatically. Uh, I can look at his portfolio that his teachers decided to, to share with his parents. So the moment we start getting into, let's say something like student portfolio, you can see the integration I was talking about that was necessary for us. Uh, if I was to just buy, I don't know, Microsoft Navision for accounting, I could not have my accounting connected to everything else. Uh, that's why we needed to build something for our own because for this little guy here, I want to have his entire accounting built in. All of his payments are in here. This is the new course, so there is no payments, but all of the invoices generated automatically, all of my tax reports generated automatically, sent to my accounting service. So the entire accounting is right there. Right, there. right next to that accounting is my electronic registries. This is his attendance and grades. This is what my teacher's input so that in the end I can get all of those analyses that I showed you earlier. My teachers can input the grades, they can input the attendance, uh, you know, they can even look at day by day when he was there, when he wasn't, when he did his homework. And this entire thing is also seen by this little, guy, little guy's parents as well. So uh, then, you know, we had, again, my friend Berislav, who wanted to add even more to integration. So he said, well, why don't you make this one-stop shop for all of the uh, sort of like administrative tools for somebody who's enrolled? So based on his design, we created this little window where you can uh, apply discounts to his course. Uh, you can generate and print out the contract. You can print any type of form you want, you know, it's going to be put in there, automatically generated, automatically printed out. Uh, you can take cash payments for him. Uh, you can generate sort of like payment slips that he can use for internet banking together with the, you know, with the code. Uh, you can create pro forma invoice for a company that's paying for him. Sort of all of the things that you would have to deal with at the beginning of a course with any number of your students, Berisla wanted us to put all in one place, so we did it. 
Then we had to, you know, uh, one time we had a situation, the first time we had a situation where we had to put in student from one group to another, we built in a change group button. Then when we had a student quit in the middle of the year, we built a resignation button. So we were able to integrate everything we needed into one place. And this is still just the very first feature of the software. This is just the student registry. Uh, one other thing I want to show you in the registry, but I'm going to find one of my adult students. Uh, let's say Adela. I know Adela had a lot of courses in the past. She is not our active student, but she had a lot of courses. Uh, we built in system for electronic archiving, because in Croatia, being formal education, we have all these different documents that we need to archive for seven years, you know, stuff like contract, enrollment forms, etc., etc. So, we built a system where we can store all of those documents uh, indefinitely on our server. They're actually backed up on two different servers, so, you know, there's never, we're never afraid of losing any of that. And all of these documents, like most of things in Amber School Manager, is user-defined. So let's say you're setting it up for your school. You're not going to be using necessarily the contract or enrollment form or whatever it is that I'm using here. You're going to define a specific set of documents that you will be using for your school. This is an easy example to show, but it is, it is an example of something that's present everywhere in Amber School Manager. You don't have a preset of values. You generate values, you define values on your own. I'll give you another example for that. When we were, um, when we tried out that one software here from Europe, we immediately discarded it because when we were trying to create groups, the group sort of creation was nice, but it allows you to put in A2, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2 levels. That's it. You cannot put anything else in there. You, you can just choose those six levels. Now, those are the six levels of the Common European Framework for Foreign Languages. But are you going to use those levels for your preschool kids? You know, probably not. Not for first graders, not for second graders either. I mean, we start at third grade, we start sort of correlating books with Common European fr Framework. Then you're not going to do A1 level uh, you know, in one semester. You're going to do it in two semesters for good groups, three semesters for smaller groups. So I'm going to need to have A11, A12, A13. Based on each of those modules, I'm going to have different things printed out in my contract. I'm going to have different things printed out on my diploma. So I need to be able to define the levels that I want myself. I want to be able to uh, choose exactly what's going to be written on my diploma or on my certificate based on the level that they are taking. That's why this, this first software we tried was just not good for us. We needed a lot more. Now, I have 39 levels defined here for seven languages and for ICT classes that we are teaching. 39, not six, but 39. And I use each of those based on the situation. So that's what sort of the custom user-defined customization Ember allows you. It allows you to define anything you want to sort of adjust the business logic to your school. So now that I've said it, I'm just going to quickly show you the features that it has. I showed the student database. We have cash registers, very important for us in Croatia because we have this really weird law that each of our cash payments needs to be sent electronically to the Ministry of Finances. It, says, it sends a code to them. They generate the code that's being sent back. So for us, it's very nice because uh, we just have our own fiscal cash register that we can use at any location. All we need to do is we you know, pick a student, any student, and we have his contract right there. Uh, we have how much he's paid so far. Again, this is the beginning of the school year, so only a few of my students have started paying. We know, uh, you know the total pay, the outstanding balance. Maybe I'll find somebody who did pay something just to show you what it looks like. Uh, I'll be able to tell by the outstanding balance. Let's try this one. Yep. <laughs> So these guys paid the first installment. I can print out a receipt. I can cancel the transaction in a legal way. I can enter a new amount here and add a payment. So the point is that my admin doesn't need to know what the price is for the student or you know, 
what this student, which group he's in. He doesn't need to do, know anything except for his name. So a student comes to the office and my admin just takes the name, takes the money, issues the receipt, doesn't have to worry about anything. Software automatically recognizes where he's at, which group, deducts, his, uh, deducts this amount from his balance, generates the receipt, generates all the accounting reports for him. There's absolutely no work for me, no work for my admin other than taking the actual money. Uh, very, very nice for us. And um, also what we've done with the cashier, we made it in a way that uh, for every country, we can have a different business logic based on the local laws. So for instance, for user Ljubo in Serbia, we just changed this entirely to fit the Serbian laws for, for cash payment receipts. Uh, then there is, of course, one of the most important thing, enrollment module or you know something that we use for our leads where when we have, you know, when, when we have the enrollments, I don't know what it's like for you guys, but you know, I usually have 500 plus students, new students coming every year asking for some class. Of course, I'm not gonna you know, enroll them all because I either don't have room or the languages or anything, but we do have the entire enrollment module. The, the enrollment module can be filtered by you know, classes, uh, levels, whatever. And what I really like about the enrollment module, I'm gonna try to find somebody here. I have this. I have the entire uh, history of what has been done by each of my staff members, what dates it was done on. Uh, I, I want to know what my staff has done to enroll this student. Now for you teachers, you don't care about that, but, but for us owners, it's very important that we enroll as many students as possible. So I want to make sure that my staff working the enrollments has done everything possible and I want it documented. So that when I go there and I find somebody who wasn't enrolled, I'm gonna be like, wait a second, why is this person not in the group? And then if I go in there and see that nobody contacted them for the last two weeks, even though the person said they were gonna come for testing, I get pretty upset about it, I have to be honest. You know, I, I, you know, because I want them to actually be on top of this. I want them to read this history and base their decisions on contacting the person further. So our enrollments have been very efficient since we started the process. Uh, another thing I wanna show you now, uh, in the little time we have, uh, which might be interesting for teachers, is uh, how the electronic registries function for teachers. So teachers have a very simplified sort of uh, user interface. Um, as an administrator, I can choose any, any teacher I have here, but I know Eva is sitting somewhere back there in the crowd, so I'm gonna uh, choose her schedule. When Eva logs into the system, she is immediately brought into her weekly schedule. And this schedule is generated from the first day of school until the last day of school. So you generate this schedule for all of your groups on the first day of semester, and it creates lecture entries in this schedule for every single lecture for that teacher till the end of the year. Now, I was going backwards in time, and you can see the green ones are the lectures that were done, the red ones were the lectures that were canceled, and uh, let's see if I go here today, then this is the current week. And the reason why Eva wasn't with us last night, for instance, is because she had these two groups last night until 10 p.m. And somebody was actually telling me, why are they working on Friday night? And I said, well, these are, you know, our, our high school students and they can only make it on Friday nights. But uh, basically, you can see her entire schedule here. If we go to next week, uh, this is Eva's schedule for next week. Nothing is green because these classes just, you know, they're going to be next week. And it is like that for the entire remainder of the school year. Now, uh, when you put these lectures in, it automatically jumps over the local holidays. It automatically jumps over the school breaks. School breaks are again user defined. You might not have the same break dates for all of your schools in the same country, but you do define when your breaks are gonna be and the schedule automatically jumps over those. But again, let's go back to the current week. And, uh, sorry, did I do that? Oh. There we go. Uh, so when Eva comes to her class, all that she needs to do, she has these two buttons, and this is where most of her work is going to be coming from. On one side is sort of like the registry. She just comes here and selects 
which one of the students was here and which one wasn't. This generates their attendance. If there was a homework, like there was, Eva just clicked that there was a homework and then she clicked on who had the homework and who didn't. She can even assign a homework title, but she doesn't have to. Then uh, Eva can write a note. A note can be to herself. I don't know, the kid was five minutes late. This is the third time that he's been late, something like that. She can choose to share that note with the parent. If she clicks on this, then the parent is going to see the note. Or if it's adult student, the adult student is going to see the note, obviously. She can, find, she can prepare her class up front using a very simple lesson planner builder, again integrated in the software. She can attach it to her lesson. And so when she comes to the class, if she needs to refer to her lesson plan, it's right there right along with everything else. If she needs to refer to the entire school year's syllabus for that particular program, it's again built in right there. Now, uh, I think Jonathan has mentioned something about student having shared space. This is very interesting. Eva can go to the teaching materials and we have an integrated database of teaching materials. I believe it's about 700 teaching materials so far that my professors have either built themselves or chosen from somewhere, and they have shared it in this database. And now any of the teachers can use those electronic teaching materials as, you know, as assistants in their classroom, using technology in the classroom. They can attach it here to their, their lecture and they can open it immediately in the classroom, not really having to go through, oh, you know, did I bring my USB? Oh, wait, the USB isn't working or I can't find it in the folder. Everything is always online in one specific database. Uh, when they choose these materials, anything that's, for instance, Microsoft Office automatically opens in Microsoft Office online module. So you don't even have to have Microsoft Office on your computer in order to show them a PowerPoint presentation. It's right there. We can also share this material with students. We can share it with the students. This becomes their little shared space. Once it is shared with the students, it will generate a forum for the students where they can mutually discuss amongst themselves or with the teacher this particular teaching material. Uh, I have to be quite honest, my professors are still not completely using this part to full extent because technology, like we all know, is a learning curve. So right now only those who are very comfortable with doing this are using it, just like they're using online classroom. Now Jonathan was giving a talk about the online uh, classes. We are giving online classes so far only to our students. Um, so we, we have a lot of students who are with us from let's say age four and uh, they're with us until they're 18 and now they just got to let's say CPE prep courses but they have to go to college to Zagreb. Uh, we enroll them through online classes. They are attending the class together with a regular class except they're online. We're not using Zoom. But if International House will buy Amber, we can integrate Zoom into Amber. We are using Adobe Connect for that. Um, and uh, the software immediately opens the Adobe Connect uh, meeting room and invites people from the registry in, the, in that room. And they just come and join. And then we use Adobe Connect and uh, you know, share desktop. Um, mostly, we mostly use uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, Notepad, Microsoft, uh, Note one note for sharing materials through that. So everything is integrated as far as technology is concerned. So that's it. it. May seem complicated at first, but when you think about it, all you have to do is just click on the attendance and homework. That's pretty simple for professors to do. And why do I know that it's simple? Because it was September 1st of what, 2014 or 15, I can't remember anymore, that I came in the class and said, listen guys, we're using this from the beginning of the school year, which was 19 days later, I said, no more paper. This is what you will be using. Everybody has 19 days to completely switch to this. I made you all user accounts, practice, do whatever you want. You know, I added some of your groups from last year into the schedule so you can practice with those. And on the 19th, everybody was using it perfectly. And up to this day, nobody made a single mistake. You know, 20 professors and nobody made a mistake. The other button is for grades, and uh, these are new groups, so they're not going to have that many grades, but let me go way back into Eva's schedule from, let's say, you know, 
this period. And now we can look at her family and friends two group. And Eva, hopefully you have some grades for this group. Yeah, there we go. So these grades are, again, professor defined. We may have some rules about grades, like we want progress exams, three written progress exams for adult teachers, and everybody has to abide by that. But different teachers are going to have different projects. You know, maybe they'll do a written exam, maybe they'll do one or two oral exams more or jointly. Maybe they'll do projects. Uh, each professor just you know clicks a new column. He creates a grading group and he assigns a grade to each particular student in their group. And parents and administrators then get the reports from all of the you know student progress. I mean. We, this is just to show you how much professors participate in this. One time, one of them came to me and said, well, you know, before we had those paper registries and when there was really no volunteers, we could just like randomly open a page and say, well, okay, you will do the, the work, so we can't do that anymore. So then we build them the little wheel of fortune that spins and spins and spins and chooses a random student. I mean, uh, this is, you know, Nice little thing, doesn't really carry much weight, but just to show you how much of uh, teacher participation there was in building this software. Uh, I really like the scheduler. It's very, very nice for me because, uh, for instance, I can have, you know, the school has already started and I still have people coming from the enrollments. And let's say a guy wants to take uh, German A11 class. And so I'm gonna go here and I see that I have three groups of German A11 for the adults. One is, uh, you know, Monday and Wednesdays, uh, 1845 to 2015, but unfortunately 14 out of 14, no room there. No room here, no room here, sorry, I can't really enroll you anymore. I mean, all of my groups are full. But uh, if they weren't, I would know exactly where I still have some space. Uh, the schedule view is also really great for classroom view because let's say that I'm planning individual lessons or I need to put in some sort of group somewhere. I can go classroom by classroom and see exactly what's happening in that classroom on each particular day. Uh, if I want to put in events that's non lesson or related like let's say I have a meeting I will put in a meeting here that's going to be a different color and you know again the room is going to be taken in that period everybody's not going to know that it's taken so that's the schedule uh, finances are here completely like this is something I use every day everybody here has bank statements I have my bank statement I open it up I pretty much have some sort of automatic okay there were no student payments here let's find something with student payments but I can just uh, you know put in my student payments in here the software automatically generates all the invoices one thing very very useful for us in Croatia we have separate companies for formal education and non-formal education and students don't really seem to get that or care too much in some cases but for instance I'll have this girl Ivana enrolled in my non-formal education company she is now 15 she's transferring to the formal education company and it's a different company but the dad is still paying you know using his old bank statement sort of guidelines and he's paying on the wrong company now the software recognizes that automatically and makes all the adjustments necessary the receipt the invoice is issued from the correct company there is all the accounting reports coming from it that allow my accountants to to book it properly etc uh, tools tools are very useful for me uh, Let's say that I want to issue a contract for one person or, or entire group. All I have to do is come in here, select group, uh, select any type of form that I use for my school, and I can print that out for the entire group, or I can print it out for each individual person, but uh, form generation is something that used to take hundreds of hours for us and even take time away from the classroom because we would come on the first day of class and then have people fill out some of these forms like let's say enrollment form for the continuing students now we don't have to do that uh, any single form that we can even imagine is just automatically generated for us by the system and each user again can define their own forms uh, 
I don't want to go through all of the tools now. We can we have some time through the round table tomorrow, so I can actually answer specific questions tomorrow. But look at these. These are all the tools that are just uh, available for you. These are all little tools that make things simple, like your, I don't know, your VAT reports or uh, your outstanding balances for your students or students who are still missing the data so your administrator can say, well, you haven't brought me, you know, like personal identification number for these students and the law requires us to have those, so please do that. So, so you know, a lot of tools that, that can really make our lives easier. Uh, I know for me, uh, from perspective of running the school, it really makes my life easier. Uh, and then, again, we're coming back to the reports. Uh, I showed you some uh, here. I want to show you another one that's really, really, really important for me. Uh, let's say I want to look at one of my companies and I want to look at the monthly report going, I don't know, let's say from last January up to today. And uh, this report allows me some very, very uh, nice things. And actually, uh, one of my users asked me today uh, that we should build something that allows him to look at, at some specific issues. And I told him, well, there is already a report. It's right here. This is the report. This report gives me my income based on the money I have collected. Uh, I can turn on and off different things. I have my courses. I have my mixed services and products. These are things like, I don't know, Cambridge exams that we sell or, or renting out the space or consultations, anything, you know, uh, translations, anything you, you want to sell to somebody and it's not course related, you can sell it through the software. But let's say I'm not really interested in that. Uh, other incomes, I don't know, these are uh, incomes from money laying in my bank or whatever. I'm not really interested in those, so I'm going to turn it off. Or, you know, maybe I am, but this is a little better view for me. I mean, as you can see, you can play here with the way you want to uh, look at the data. Um, I usually just use the stacked uh, view and now I want to compare it with the courses as I am uh, writing, signing contracts. Now this is the money flaw that my school should be getting. This is normal. I don't have any courses during the summer so there's very little income here. And then this is the actual money flow, how my uh, students are paying. So I can always sort of look at the patterns of my students paying and I know exactly when to expect more money, when to expect less money. This is important for me, especially through the summer period because I can sort of estimate when I want to pay for my books, when I want to pay for my marketing, uh, anything that's, that's money planning relating, I can get you know, just out of some of these reports. I have that same thing for my expenses. This is my quantitative analysis for expenses. And it's really weird. I'm, I really want to know why I'm spending so much money in June. It doesn't make any sense, but you know, I'll, I'll have to look into this. I mean, June is just right up out there. But more importantly, I have my qualitative analysis. Now, I know that this is the money, so 68% of all my expenses are my salaries. Of course, all of my professors are employed full time. They're all with me. You know, there's 20 of us in school. Uh, you know, these are, I don't know, my internal transfers. Uh, these are my EU projects, uh, my books. I mean, you people from OUP really, you know, should be charging less when they look at these numbers, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, I can look at any of these analyses. I can go in here and now look at the subcategories. I mean, you know, these are my bonuses. Uh, this is my, you know, income. This is my travel expenses. Anything that, that I want to look at, I can see there. And again, these groups are again user defined. Uh, I was discussing with this with Jonathan earlier. I mean, your accounting has some type of report that's going to tell you about your expenses. But their reporting is different from what you want to see. I mean, I don't really care. They, they, they group their, your expenses based on, I don't know, type of the invoice. I really don't know. I'm not an accountant. But I know that, that their expense reports for me are completely useless. I want to know exactly how much I'm paying for my salaries, how much I'm paying for the books, how much I'm paying for, I don't know, utilities, the, the space rental, whatever. So I can do that using Amber School Manager because I define all of these categories and subcategories as I see fit. Um, 
other useful features there is complete integrated chat here and right now I have eight unread messages and uh, I know that people have been trying to get in touch with me I'm usually really good about responding to these but it's the conference weekend and I told all of my staff I'm not going to be available for anything other than the conference so these will have to wait until Monday but yeah you do get notifications when people send you messages and pretty much all of our communication in school transferred into this you know because we yeah you know the teacher you know took away the cakes in the middle of the class from the office so you know I, I'm not gonna go in her class and ask her where the cookies are but I can send her message because I know she is in class and using the system uh, it's very convenient method of communicating with the with, with your teachers uh, with the students with parents of students everything is there and everything is safe indefinitely only the administrator can delete these so it's very good for you owners when you know if there's a problem that occurs at some point you don't really have to go looking for that email you have everything in the system um, so that's the general overview now again if I wanted to show you every single feature at a time this would take hours and hours and hours because there really is like if we go to every of these little menu buttons here I mean you can tell how much stuff there is in each of these uh, you know maybe if anybody has a question about some specific feature there you know, oh I just got another message great probably somebody from here is sending me from the phone just to tease me but that's okay um, I would say you know I would leave uh, leave it for tomorrow when we have the tour of the school uh, we can actually sit down in a smaller group uh, in my school and we can go over software into more details but uh, but I you know I think this is enough to give you just an overview of what I'm trying to present so I you know would like to give you a chance to ask me any questions now and uh, of course we can talk about any questions tomorrow as well maybe one of my current users Marko is here from Žigar school Berislav is here from Lingva Pax Ljubo is here from from Serbia so uh, if maybe any of them would like to add anything to this uh, that's fine by me and uh, if not you can ask them firsthand what their experience is using the software <laughs> <laughs>